finish our uh, anniversary. 22nd anniversary. Take the notes, 22nd anniversary. Not 23rd, not 24th. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to change it sometimes, right? <laughs> so we've just done a photo shoot at um, Posh Clicks. Uh, portraits and um, amazing as always and we've Incredible I think we've done this for the last uh, few years yes uh, just you know to keep the memory going mm -hmm. of, of our marriage mm -hmm. and we thought there are some beautiful girls here who've asked different questions and we just thought to do a quick interview mm -hmm. and share our perspective on some of the questions they've asked so Chi Chi Chiere who's uh, the hairdresser from Olive Tree in Enugu. Enugu. In Enugu is here and she did my hair. She just asked a very imp uh, interesting question. Mm. And she says, you know, how do you guys maintain your ind individuality but still seem so infused in each other's lives? Mm. And my response to that is we're both, we both value each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. We value each other's personalities. We also are quite aware of each other's weakness. Mm. And in acknowledging all these things, mm. it is imp it's impacted how we deal. Mm. So my husband is a planner. He's very strategic. He thinks ahead of things. He's super organized. You know, he likes everything properly arranged a certain way, right? I am more spontaneous. You know, I love fun. It's the life. Of the party, it's right? Energy. <laughs> The, right the sunshine thank you my right? <laughs> now that the difference right can also become a trigger mm. for disagreements mm. and and i tell the story about how generally we travel every time it's our wedding anniversary we go away somewhere and for many years when we are traveling uh because my husband is a planner and, you know he likes to get to the airport very early I, on the other hand, I'm sure you all know. Catch the plane by the tail. <laughs> last person to enter, last person to check in. Unfortunately, you know, they can't check me in until she arrives. So I've gotten to the airport three hours ahead of time, right? And I'm waiting for my wife. And then the question, is she going to Where get she? you? Will she Where get you on time? Mr. Drutwe, where's your wife? Like, she's coming, she's coming. And so, this difference right in how we do things generally can be a stressor my husband will be there sweating away and then you just see this girl just come in with my bag like rushing like, oh. like the queen of <laughs> right and it's, it can get upset and sometimes you are not traveling for six days seven days on this honeymoon you spend two days being angry right and we made a commitment once and what we said to ourselves was listen we spend too much money to travel to buy a ticket, to pay for a hotel, and then we spend two days being annoyed. Let's make a decision that never again will we travel on any trip and be angry and not speak to each other. And that simple commitment, we, we've kept it. We've kept it. And guess what? The more we did it, the more we realized it was actually possible to even do it at home. And I think that sometimes the, the point is, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Because um, I think that many times we trade happiness for being right. We trade happiness for, for winning the argument. We trade happiness for... So I, I've not... I've realized, look, this is... She's... She, my wife, she loves the, the buzz, the energy, the adrenaline of catching the flight. I don't like it. But that's me. She does. She's not wrong for that. Um, so I'm not going to judge her. Because that's what, that was what I was doing, really. Mm -hmm. I was why judging her that I, in a way, I'm, ah, ah, why can't you just organize yourself? I'm, I'm highlighting, I'm looking at her weakness, supposedly, um, which is also her strength, by the way. Um, but my point is this, you know, in the end, it all comes down to this decision point. Would I rather be right or would I rather be happy? And in the end, I think happiness trumps right any day. Guess what? You can't even remember two days after what you were right about anyway. So why don't you just, you know, laugh it out. Don't take yourselves too seriously, you know. And, and to be honest with you, she kind of like now tries, right? It's not even without me stressing and fussing about it. She just knows that, you know what? This thing's going to stress this guy. So but you know, it. I'll just, I just... But this is a long time after. It wasn't, yeah. I mean, I didn't start that way. Uh, Joko, who's the founder of... 
uh, short clicks. Um, and the question she asked was, how do you relate without offense? Hmm. How do you relate without offense? So how do you do it? Um, so I think first of all, it's a decision, hmm. but I primarily, uh, we are Christians mm. and our faith is a huge part of our lives. Mm. Um, and it's not something that is a, it's not something we put on the table. It's mm. something that is our reality. Mm. So it dictates our behavior mm -hmm. in a lot of, a lot of times mm -hmm. and our values. Mm -hmm. And it's plain easy. One of the things the Bible says is, you know, you should not allow the sun to go down on your anger. We literally, literally follow that scripture. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm upset, if, so another thing we agree, if one person is angry, yes. the other person is not allowed to be angry. Yeah. You have something called the right, the, the right to first anger. So the we, minute I am the one upset, my husband has to apologize, pet me, whatever. The minute he's upset, I have to beg him after. <laughs> <laughs> after all is said and done. And the anger is no longer there. We can now have a conversation. But you know what? It's not in the time when the person is upset that I would then insist that no, we must. We must. No, 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 no. He's upset. He has a right to be upset. I'm so sorry, sugar. I, I'm really, really sorry that this is how you feel. I'm really, really sorry. And then he eases out. Same way. But I think I apologize more times than you apologize. I'm not sure. I, I believe I do. But this is the trait. Um, and I think there's quick, three quick things I'm going to highlight. Number one is that um, right to first anger may sound as if it, it, it's not real. How can you guys, how can one person be angry? No, no. Once you agree, and I always say, in a way, use your so time, time of peace, peace to prepare for, for time war. Of war. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, the time for you to set the boundaries around how you will be angry is when you guys are having, having a good time. So once we've agreed, we know that no offense will come now. So let's let's have a protocol for handling offense yeah. when it does come. And that it was in the it was in it was in peacetime that we agreed that once one person is angry, the other person must chill. And so when my wife used, used to say to me, "Just tell me you're sorry," I, I initially I, my brain will almost fry. Like so I don't understand how on earth am I supposed to say I'm sorry for I what did I do? And then one day she said it, she said, no, it's not about what you did, it's about the fact that I feel this way. And the light bulb came on. And it was true, I wasn't happy that she was upset. Whether I was right or wrong wasn't the issue. And so I decided that, okay, yeah, I, I am sorry that you feel this way. And she said, okay, that's it. And I thought, what? And, and it's been like that, so in reality, what you do is you, you, you take down the temperature of what can escalate into a full-blown argument. And once you keep that temperature low, then we can make sense later. I think too many people are trying to make sense when the there's too much, in, you know, there's too much, so, so, too much emotions in, in it. So, so I'm sorry is not about the right mm -hmm. or wrong. It's about the way you feel. Right now. Right. But this, this, the second one is just based on something that Tara said. You know, I've, I've always believed that there are three of us in the marriage. There's myself, Tara, and God. I don't think that God is a witness to our marriage. I think God is a part of our covenant. And if God is a part of our covenant, then technically speaking, God is the head of our home, right? Um, I'm submitted to God, Tara is submitted to me. There's like, you know, like the way you have the ch chairman of a board, and then you have the CEO, and you have the COO. It, it works because she's a business person. She understands that one very easily. Having said that, one of the times when I remember I was really upset and, and God asked me a question and he said, what do you teach in organizations that you're trying to build a culture? What do you teach the people when somebody does something that is wrong? And I said, well, you teach them to escalate rather than fight it amongst themselves. I said, so why aren't you escalating it to me? I'm like, what? I said, yeah, so escalate it. If my daughter does something you don't like, escalate it to me. I'm her father. In that I will. Discussion. My God, that was the day that I realized that I wasn't just married to Tara and my father, God. I was also married to my father-in-law. 
So God is my father and my father-in-law because he's also Tara's father. And when I think of Tara as the daughter of God, it helps me to, shape, shape. it shapes the way I deal with her in a completely different light. Yeah. Because I am sure that nobody here, nobody listening to me here, baby, who's the baddest? Putin. If you were, if you were married to Putin's daughter, would you ever mistreat her? You can't try. <laughs> right? so, 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 so my point is this. And, and, and then the last thing I just wanted to say is, in the end, if your home is supposed to be the place that hosts the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is many times represented as a dove for a, for a, for a few reasons. Not that the Holy Spirit is a dove. Symbol. But it's a symbol. His character is like a dove. And every time you fluster a dove, it leaves. So if you want the Holy Spirit to remain in your home, you've got to keep the, the peace in your home. It's very important that you do that. So that the dove can to, stay. So that the dove can stay. And for, for, for me, I think that the presence of God in our home is so critical to me. It's more important to me than any argument or any fight that I want to fight. So I'm, I'm very aware of the temperature of our home to be able to host the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Brainiacs. Yeah. So is there anything that we did? Um, At the foundation? Yeah. Well, I mean, so by the time I met Tara, um, you know, my, as a professional um, management consultant, right, working with Philips Consulting, and in my head, my mind, um, everything about marriage is like an organization. I just used an example of you know, God being the head of the board, you know. So I remember that the, when we first met, I actually, I told my wife that I needed us to set up a vision statement, mission statement, and core values. And she was like, <laughs> I mean, and this was, we weren't married, of course, it was, you know. Um, I think the second thing was actually the day that we went on our first date, mm -hmm. I, I also said something that I think may have shocked her a bit. And I said to her that, you know, I'm com I believe I am going to be a very successful husband of a successful wife. And I said to him, that's not possible. Like, you, uh, cannot, you can't have those two how, things. Yeah, one person is either going to be successful and the other will be yeah. the backup or the... Yep. And I said, no, that, that's not how... That's not the vision that I see. For the future. The vision I see is that we're going to be two hugely successful people. My job is not just complete whether I succeed or not. My job is also to be able to support my wife in ensuring that she succeeds as best. And, as, you know, and my responsibility is also to support him to be the best that he can be. And give him all so, the support. So that foundation made it such that there was not going to be any competition in our home. Because in a way, no matter how much Tara is succeeding, it is in my dream. My vision and my dream includes her success at the highest level. So her success gives me fulfillment just as much as my success does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. And then I think we have one last question from Joko. Joko, what was your last question? Aha, okay. Okay. In the different yeah. Ah, the different ah no no no. Yeah. Ways. Okay. So Joko's last question was around um she believes that in 22 years, there must have been shifts mm -hmm. in changing seasons. Mm -hmm. And how did we prepare ourselves or how did we transition in such a way that it was not detrimental to the marriage and, you know, at a larger, a larger scale? Mm -hmm. uh, the first thought that comes to me is, wow, marriage is full of seasons uh, and quite turbulent seasons as well. So one of them is, for example, you know, as a woman, you get married, you get pregnant uh, for your first child, um, your body changes. Um, and sometimes we, you know, we underestimate the amount of change that takes place mm -hmm. uh, when, a, when a woman gets pregnant. And then in my own case, I got pregnant, had the first child, and a few months time I got pregnant again. And then a few months time I got pregnant again the third time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have three sons. That are almost like triplets. Who are almost like triplets, right? Um, and to be honest, ha re having those babies, and having a baby while having a baby and then having a baby and then having two babies was hard. Mm. 
and it impacted our relationship in different ways. It impacted our sex life, it impacted my ability to be able to manage the home as a whole. So we, I was not as organized, right, as I ought to have been in terms of sometimes, you know, toilet roll has finished and I didn't know that toilet roll had finished. Uh, pampers for one baby has finished and I didn't realize that there was only two left and it's already night time and the morning and these things, because my husband is very organized, used to drive me nuts, right? And then there was the, the whole complain about us saying what's why is this thing so difficult why can't we just make sure that we have toothpaste when we're supposed to have toothpaste right and that transition was was tough um i think about transitioning from you know having a business and, um, and can i just throw in yes and then of course you know when i married this girl this baby you know and then of course when she's she's a nursing mother for three years in a row back to back almost you know and so today she, she, she's forgotten to go and have her nails done. She's mm. forgotten to her. And, you know, in a way, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you look at it and think to yourself, Kai, what, what happened to this girl? Yes, yes. But you not... happened to her. That was what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You happened yes, to her. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, you know, it's, and also at this time, you know, you we're talking about businesses that are now scaling, mm -hmm. right? Having a, you know, when we get one married, the business at, at you know, at, both. you know, uh, nascent stages, yes. and then we get to a point where they are now at growth stage, and now we're going to scale stage. And in scaling, right, my husband is here traveling around the world um, while I'm here with his children, do you see? But at the same time, I'm also running a business that I'm also scaling. Um, I, I mean, a trans huge transition for, for me is, you know, having multiple locations across the country mm -hmm. from being a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that was a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, another transition that we've just entered into <laughs> is, is, you know, being empty nesters. Mm -hmm. right? All her kids have left home now. Sweet transition. Well, well guess what? Sweet, sweet transition for him. For me, it wasn't a sweet, sweet transition because I felt like I was losing my babies, right? And they were going to, you know, voice have changed, looks have changed. You're calling somebody's phone, they are not answering, right? And they're not in the country. Oh my God. And you are thinking, yeah, if you were and, just next day. And the fact that my, this is here, me thinking, wow, my wife is now my own. And then my, a, a boy somewhere in the world does not pick up his phone and is affecting the mood of the person I'm supposed to be loloxing and, and she doesn't, she's like, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? So, so they are real trans, these are real trans. I've just mentioned some, but I'm sure they are much more than what I've just referenced. Yeah. But going back to how did we handle, um, for the for childbirth and, and, you know, transitioning and nursing mom, I don't know how we survived that period. I think it was very tough, very, very tough. I think it was probably one of the toughest part of our marriage and mm -hmm. um, I would like to encourage the guys who are out there in, in hindsight, um, men have to take responsibility of knowing that there's a huge cost to child rearing. Absolutely. And therefore become more present to understand that, mm -hmm. right? And do more to support the, their women. Mm -hmm. um, Fela did as much, you know, and I think what he basically did was to make sure that we had two nannies and a cook. But I think I don't think it was sufficient. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, I, I think, agree. I don't think it was sufficient. I think that I also needed emotional support, but I, I didn't agree. even know that I needed it, right? Mm -hmm. Until years after. Mm -hmm. So my charge to young men who are out there now would be to say, if you can provide support in terms of staff and things like that, do it. But it's not enough. Mm. Women also need emotional support. And, and, and in be emotional support, especially being focusing on being there, not just for her, but with her. And I think that that, because here it is, I, you know, I've traveled to one place or the other, come back home, and you are blowing guy just making noise and your wife is almost upset and you don't realize and you're thinking what's wrong with her you know why she doesn't you don't realize that she's had to deal with issues whilst you were gone and to you like, ah, she, I, I, I mean you have everything yeah, you need yeah, yeah. you have like i have, yeah, have yeah. given you a driver i've given, given you a cook a cook i've given you two nice. nannies what more do you want oh my god she wants she wants the things that money can't buy. That's what she wants. Such as? Such as time alone with her, finding out how you're doing. 
baby, how are you? Then being there to be able to say, listen, you know, is there anything I can I can do? Is there something? And just listening, because I think that much of the time, you know, the, the one thing you, you need at that time is being present with her. And like I said, you know, for her and with her. Um, and I think that that's very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think that if you just, if it, just using what makes sense, you met her before you met your children. Therefore, your wife should, you should be a husband before you're a father. Mm. End of story. Mm -hmm. Every time you come back, be a husband first mm -hmm. and then be a father. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people sometimes, I, can't I, 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 I got it wrong. I was too happy to see my kids roll with my boys and sometimes, you know, just not pay enough attention. But I'm grateful that she was also kind enough to just to bear with me and recognize that I didn't know. If I knew better, I'll do better, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, in Yoruba, they talk about this thing called ileoko, ileoko, as though it is just the husband's home that is a learning institution for the wife. But guess what? Most men have never been husbands before. So we're really all supposed to be learning from each other. First and foremost, I disagree with the Yoruba adage, it's ileoko, I think it's ilewa. Ilewa, mm. ileoko. It is not just the husband's home, it's the wife's home as well. And, and it's, it's both of us learning. You know, it's, oh, it's both of us God. learning and... and try, 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 try. You see why I've been married to him for 22 years. <laughs> right? We so, can't have enough. We can't so, have enough. So it's, it's, yeah. really, it's really all about yeah. learning. Yeah. Um, so let me talk maybe, about... Please, can you talk about intentionality? Because there's something, there's something you share that yeah. I think the world always needs to hear about being intentional about happiness. Please, can you share it? Okay. Um, so, I mean, many of us have heard this quote many times, you know, no one is responsible for your happiness, mm. right? And I think we take that for granted. And I, I, what I often say is, do a research and find what makes you, what, what your happiness triggers are. Mm. And all of us is different, right? Mm. Um, we sat down one of those days to analyze what makes, what excites each one of us, and it's mm -hmm. different. Um, one of the things that excites me is might not necessarily be what will excite you, mm -hmm. but find yours and mm -hmm. make sure that every day, in one way or the other, you are triggering that happiness. Uh, one of the things that makes me happy is visiting my uncle, my <laughs> mother's only sibling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very strange, but mm -hmm. it's one of the things I just absolutely, absolutely. love. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I go and visit him. Even before I visit him, I'm excited to go and see him. When I do visit him, I'm on a high when I return. I now know. So I put it in my calendar mm -hmm. as part of the things I must do. Mm -hmm. So go and visit my, I love my uncle, but I also realize that it makes me feel happy. So what is your happiness trigger? Find it and ensure that you're constantly looking for ways to engage in that, in that way. The other um, um, a transition period I talked about, which mm -hmm. is what we're currently experiencing, is, you know, becoming empty nesters. Mm -hmm. And becoming empty nesters, for many people, makes them feel like they, they're lost. And I mm -hmm. felt that way when my children left. But what I've also found is it's giving us an opportunity to reorganize, relearn. to redefine and to relearn. Rediscover each and to rediscover each other. Um, and so the house is empty and I'm now beginning to appreciate the fact that, you know, for the very first time we're all by ourselves, like there's nobody in any room, just us in this whole house. Wow. We can stay in this room today, we can stay in that room tomorrow, we can stay in this, and do whatever we like in any of the rooms. Okay? Uh, but, but there's also um, another exciting thing is de deciding to change our routine. So we never used to do this, but you know what? We decided that every single day of the week, we have something special that we're doing yeah. with each other. Um, on Saturday, we must go swimming, go for a walk for one hour together. On Mondays, we must play mood ga uh, board, board games. games. Another day, we'll just dancing. listen to dancing. We'll just listen to love songs. On Monday, so we just Today did is Tuesday. Mm. Today, today is card day. Yeah, so we play cards. Whether it's Ludo or it's... Uh, no, Another. board games, not card games. We have this uh, lover's edition thing, card, yeah. right? So Where so you so just so take it out, ask questions and whatever. And, you, you know, you have a, an intimate time. But the decision to do so is not it's something we, we did... Five years ago, ten years ago, we only just started it now because we realized that there's a gap. And very easily, I can get carried away with the fact that my children are here and be miserable and just and not even know. And then we can't begin to drift apart. 
but we decided to be deliberate and intentional about keeping ourselves engaged in this time. So I guess those are the questions that you've asked us and uh, I hope it's useful to everyone who listens. Thanks. <laughs> Just to quickly say, guys, I mean it with all my heart when I say the last 22 years have been the best 22 years of my life. I'm not saying it because of camera, I say it to her all the time. Yes. Um, I, I say to God all the time, but I, I, I want, and I hope that it's been the same for her. Yay! Having said that. Did you just say no, no, that? No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Having said that, um, I really want to publicly say thank you. Oh, okay. I know I say thank you privately, but I also want to say thank you, baby, for, for, for doing all you can to make me happy. I appreciate it. I don't think it's easy. I always say I don't think anybody else could have married me except you. Even I would not have married myself, <laughs> right? Um, but but um, you know, I want to say, God, you know, thank you so much. And and thank you also for being a fine Christian man. Fine Christian man. What I mean by that is. You do what the Bible says, period. You don't, you don't mean. So I can, I know that if you're behaving anyhow, all I have to just say is remember that you're a Christian. The minute I man say that you be, I, I, man <laughs> and God. You know, and I think that sometimes we we take it for granted. We the word I'm a Christian or the mm. phrase I'm a Christian just sounds like something mm. we say. No, mm. living it every day will make marriages work. Mm. I'm not talking about church going. I'm not talking about Christian mm. in church. No, I'm talking about Christian who are real disciples of Jesus Christ, which means that it's what Jesus says that I will do, that I will do. It doesn't mean we don't make mistakes, mm. right? It doesn't mean that he's perfect. It doesn't mean I am perfect. But one thing we know is that we are constantly searching for God, where God chases. And when we go to him and he says, mm -mm, I don't like the way you're treating my son, I will adjust mm. and I will apologize. And I'm intentional about making sure that he's happy. You know, I always tell people that if my husband is five minutes away from here, I can tell how he's feeling. I just can't tell because I'm in tune and I'm in tune because I'm deliberate and intentional about being in tune. So marriage is not going to happen. Happy marriage is not going to happen because we wish for it to happen. It's going to only happen because we put in the work that is required and that's mm. what we've done for 22 years. Don't walk out. Work it out. Mm -hmm.